Hello classmates, welcome back to the class. In this video, we are going to introduce the second time frame expansion method, the nine value D algorithm, which was proposed by MOVE in 1976. At the beginning of this video, please do an exercise. Given this fault and this sequential circuit, Run the simulation and see if we can detect this fault by applying a sequence of test patterns 0, 0 and 0, 01. Please now pause the video and try to do this exercise. Okay, have you finished the exercise? If you do it correctly, you will find that the full free status of this circuit is 0, 1, and the full free output would be 1 in the first cycle and 0 in the second cycle. If this circuit has a stuck at 1, 4, then the 40 output would be 1, 1. Since the output Z is different in the second cycle, we can detect the 4. So the answer would be yes. However, if we try to use the extended D algorithm that we taught in the previous lecture, we would fail. Suppose that we want to propagate this 4 to the output. So we apply a 0 to A in the 0 time frame. To propagate the D through this NAND gate, the side input will be 1. To control this side input to 1, we will need a 0 here. If we need a 0 at y0, we will need a 1 at the NOR gate, which implies that both of the inputs of the NOR gate will be 0. In that case, we will need a 0 at input A in time frame minus 1. But this is a clunk freak because this is actually a stuck at 1, 4. So according to the extended D algorithm, this 4 cannot be tested. So this is very confusing. Since that we already shown that this 4 is testable, why does extended D algorithm fail? This is because that Y0 is actually over specified in the 5 value logic. If we think about it, actually this value does not have to be 0. This is because traditional 5 value logic can only express 5 different logic state, which is 0 slash 0, which means that the good circuit is 0 and the faulty circuit is 0. 1 slash 1, x slash x, 0, 1, and 1, 0. This is not sufficient for sequential circuit. Five value logic cannot express, for example, 1x, 0x, x0, and x1. So now, here is another quiz for you. For sequential circuit, how many different logic state do we need to express? Please think about it and pause the video.
Have you come up with an answer? For the good circuit and the faulty circuit, we will need zero, one, and none. So totally, we will need three square, which is nine different logic values. So in 1976, Move proposed to use nine value D algorithm to solve this problem. In traditional five value logic, we can only express one zero, zero one, zero zero, one one, and xx. Now, in most nine value logic, we can express zero x, which means the good value is zero and the faulty value is unknown. We can use the symbol G0 to show this case. And we can also express 1x, x0, and x1. By using Muth 9 value logic, we can express all the possible logic combination for sequential ATPG. For example, given a two input AND gate, suppose that one of the input is D prime, which means that the good circuit is zero, the faulty circuit is one. If we want to propagate this D prime, to the output, we could have x1, which means the good value is unknown and the faulty value is 1. With this combination, the output can be d prime. So the full effect can be propagated to the end gate output, even though one of the side input is unknown for the good circuit. Using this nine value truth table, we can avoid the over specification problem. The cost is that the truth table is much larger than traditional truth table. As we can see, the size is nine by nine. Now let's apply the new nine value logic for test generation. Suppose we want to propagate this four to the output Z. The side input would be one X. Please know that the 40 circuit can be unknown. If this is 1x, then this would be 0x. Then we would need to justify from the left. So this signal would be 1x, which means that the input to A is 0x. This is consistent with the stuck at 1, 4. So there is no conflict anymore. Using the net value logic, we can now generate a set of test patterns, which is 0, 0 and uh, 1, 0. If we compare the nine value logic and five value logic, we can see the difference. In five value logic, we need a 1 here, but actually this is an over-specification. In 9 value logic, we only require 1x. In this case, we can successfully justify this test. In summary, in this video, we have introduced 
the nine value d algorithm, which can express all nine possible logic states to avoid over specification problem. Before we end this video, we have two interesting FFT for you. Question number one. In the past, combinational ATPG, we need only five value logic. But now in sequential ATPG, we need nine value logic. So why didn't we consider these four possibility in combinational ATPG? What was the reason? Question number two. For this specific sequential ATPG problem, we said that we failed to control Y0 to 0 because we have a conflict in the time frame. So can we move on one more time frame to the left? That is, can we control Y minus 1 to 1? Does this work? Please think about these two interesting questions. Thank you for watching.